but we have more revision. Uh, we have talked a little hinted from Pozoria here to talk us about this experience in 3D surgery. We've been doing it since 2018 and uh, doesn't feel to be popular on surgery at all anymore. So welcome and let's enjoy it. Thank you. Dear colleagues, thank you for the nice uh, introduction. Uh, I want to also thank uh, Alcon for having me here. And I want to share my experience with the 3D digital surgical visualization. So here are my disclosures. And what, I, what is the 3D surgical visualization? This is a way of, at the moment, of achieving a digital image from analog microscopes. Uh, the ingenuity is the perfect fit for that. And uh, what we search with the microscopy, we need to have high resolution, high magnification, and if possible, high depth of field. What will be our benefits? Uh, of course, it will increase our precision. Uh, we will be more effective and we can control every situation or our movements. It will uh, lead to reduced patient risk. And also, it's a perfect tool to, in our uh, active social environment, to share what we do. We can teach and we can show what we are doing in the operating room in the perfect way. So the technology overview, obviously, it should be there should be a camera which is special one with high dynamic range. I will explain what is high dynamic range and why it is important. Uh, of course, it needs to be connected to a high, um, high spec processing unit and we need to have the best possible screen in order to achieve the best possible image. So this is the camera and what is important, it can be mounted on every microscope. What is uh, the real benefit at the moment of the ingenuity system. This is a transitional system which can uh, make uh, any existing analog microscope, no matter average one or high-end one, to a digital microscope. And uh, it can provide the best image that the optics are capable of. Why is that? because the camera is important. The human eye has a 100 decibels of dynamic range. The dynamic range is the ability of single pixel to maintain an image, no matter in a low light condition or high intensity light condition and with a lot of reflections. Basically, it means that the higher the dynamic range, the better the image quality. Here you can see that the Typical DSLR has a 40 decibels uh, dynamic range. A high-end professional cinema camera has 78 decibels dynamic range. The Ingenuity camera has 85, so it's closer to the human eye. Uh, of course, the camera is connected to a high-performance PC, which is responsible for seamless fast image creation with less latency possible. Of course, the OLED display is really important, is medical grade and is passive, which will not create any fatigue on the surgeon. Of course, it's an open platform with also a picture-in-picture -picture capabilities and you can connect whatever source of information you want. And if you want to show this to the surgeon during the surgery, he can see it immediately on the screen, beside the main screen. Uh, you can go beyond the limit of the analog microscope. Why? Because, for example, during the surgery, due to the increased depth of field, uh, you non don't need to refocus on a different structures which might be of interest, especially in anterior segment, this is important. Another thing that is important is actually the press biopia because the ingenuity screen is far vision. 
if we are looking through the oculars, our depth of field is limited to our ability to accommodate. So uh, it negates the need for adapting for press biopia, which in my opinion is really important because I'm already on starting the press biopic uh, issues myself. So high quality precision, it gives you a five time extended depth of field, which, we, which I already mentioned. Uh, you can imagine that you can have 48% increase of magnification plus the magnification of your microscope, which is definitely beneficial. Uh, you can have an increased depth resolution, which means that in all the depth of field you see with equal resolution, which is something that is not the same in analog microscope. And at the end, last but not least, you can have a personalized color profiles. Also, you can create your own digital filters, which I will show later. So it gives you limitless opportunity to modify the image. Here is an example how you can see the fundus and the vessel through the ingenuity without any bion contact lens or any additional optic. If you apply a filter, it can increase certain structure as the vessel. Here you can see the detail. This is an intraoperative view of VVT um, central element. Here you can appreciate the level of magnification and also you can appreciate the structures that you can see. You see in maximum magnification, this is my microscope which is Lumera and the size microscopes are prone to create a shallow depth of field, field in high magnification. You can still see the wrinkles of the capsule and the full size of the tip of the instrument, which means that you get on maximum resolution more than two millimeters of depth of field. Another example of high magnification and depth resolution. And this is another example of a large macular hole. You can appreciate the branches of the forceps and how they are on focused. Here are the uh, examples of personalized color profiles. Uh, you can tailor the color temperature or you can use a white balance in order to have the best possible image for your own color perceptance. Uh, with the software version 1.431, you have the option to use different filters, uh, which are monoscopics, red free, monochrome, um, blue, and you can also create your own filters. So you have the freedom and the ability to manipulate the image in such way that you can highlight structures of interest. Because in the eye, especially in anterior segment, we have transparent tissue tissues with different refractive properties and we can play with the color channel and create boundaries between them and we can distinguish better the different transparent tissues, something that cannot be done with analog microscope. Uh, this is a take home message, how to achieve the best image from your ingenuity. Of course, there will be outcome application specialists which will uh, provide this as a reference, but I think it's better to be mentioned. The most important thing is that you need to find the perfect placement of the screen and it should be in between 1.1 to 1.3 meters from the surgeon in order to have the best uh, parallax, the best 3D and the best pixel resolution. It's really important to understand, to understand that, that there is a aperture control, which is responsible for depth control. It shouldn't be no more than 30% open and no more than 70% closed. These are the starting points from which you can adjust the image by your own preference. 
Another important thing is to parafocalize the microscope before starting any case, especially posterior segment ones. And when you increase the magnification, you pay attention to cover all the area of the screen. This is the sweet spot. Otherwise, you will work with smaller than the optimal image. Another important thing is the evolution of the system until it reached the 1.4 version. First, it was uh, data fusion with constellation. Later on, there is wireless data fusion and connection with the Centurion. What is the meaning of data fusion? We can control the ingenuity, color profiles and color channels through the pedal of uh, constellation or uh, of the Centurion. And the most important thing is that the link with the Centurion is wireless, so less wires in the OR, which is important. These are the reference. And now I will ask you to place your 3D glasses because we will have a 3D movie presentation. So this is a typical anterior segment case and you can see the overlay of, uh, of the of the Centurion. Can I, can I have the microphone? Uh -huh. So, sorry, I will move back a little in order to see. Yeah, this is a color filter developed by me, which supposed to increase the contrast differences between the uh, lens material and the capsule. Uh, you can appreciate the fluid wave and you can see how the anterior rexis was on focus and the wave which is roughly four millimeters behind the lens, um, behind, so it's behind the lens. So here you can see the transparency of the pieces and uh, now you can see the regular image. So uh, definitely in my opinion, the, the filter can be helpful and again, it's a matter of personal preference. Uh, here, you just follow the pieces. You see, the pieces are glowing and you have enhanced fundus reflex. So it's something that you cannot do with a regular microscope. Here in irrigation aspiration, this is another type of digital filter, which is custom made. And the aim is to increase the contrast again of the capsule uh, and the cortex. So it will be better to distinguish them. Now, this is implantation of uh, 26 diopters VVT IOL under the same filter because the lens is also a transparent structure. And this is an uh, example of the high magnifications and the things that we can appreciate in 3D. So this is the end of this case and all the relevant parameters are shown on the screen. This is example of the 48% magnification. You can see every detail and you can change the image modalities. You can change the filters. You can change the representation of the image. Again, the aim is to best visualize the tissue of interest. So it's even more you can increase the magnification. Again, this is size Lumera microscope who might suffer from shallow depth of field in high magnification situation. This is the example of uh, the increased depth of field capabilities of the ingenuity. And this is a real time image of the fundus without any contact lens or biome. Of course, it's a little bit strange. And this is example of the parafocalization. You need to focus on the limbus 
in high magnification, then you can reduce your magnification and you can start the case. Uh, that way, when you increase your zoom during the surgery, it will be always on focus. Here is another case where we start with normal image representation. This is a, I'm using horizontal chop. And now this is a filter applied. In my opinion, there is a little bit more visual information that we can have from the nucleus. He, and the nucleus is more transparent and the surgeon can approach it more confidently. Again, the regular image. Again, all relevant parameters are on the periphery of the image. So if we need to check something, it's there. Here, this is an example of high magnification and also the so-called latency. Would I allow myself to play with the capsule in that way if there was a latency between the image that I see and the motion that I do. Now there is no perceivable latency in the system, which means that everything happens naturally. So that is why we don't use any more oculars in our clinics. So this is, of course, done on purpose. I don't work with such high magnification, but you can appreciate the quality of the image. Of course, here we also have a filter applied and the contrast is enhanced in my opinion. Now, here is a case on which I will perform uh, posterior capsule rexis. Uh, it is completely doable heads up. Uh, but of course there is a learning curve. And again, you can see the wrinkles of the cornea which are on focus and also the posterior capsule which is roughly on five to six millimeter behind the uh, surface of the cornea which means that we have increased depth of field with maintained resolution, which is the definition of depth resolution, because it's a new term, at least for me, depth resolution. We all know that the posterior capsule rexis is a stressful situation for all surgeons, no matter anterior segment or posterior segment length. But the key to successful surgical procedure is actually a better visualization. Because when we see, we are allowed to work. If we don't see, the so-called sixth, sixth sense might mislead us sometimes. So here is the posterior capsule. And then you see the anterior hyaluid, the smaller circle. So you can imagine if you need to do this through the oculars, you will be leaning forward to the microscope and on top of the tension that you are doing posterior uh, capsule orexis, you will have the muscle, mus muscle tension of your back and neck also. So you you divide your attention to maintain your position and to do the rexis. So with heads up, at least for me, it's easier. Now this is a typical case of um, express uh, glaucoma procedure, the way I do it. I do fairly large scleral flap. Uh, again, I want you to appreciate the tissue discrimination, I mean the resolution of the image, the fibers of the sclera, and also that the tension suture and the cornea are in focus. Again, your field is natural with a lot of depth of field. 
adaptive focus. Here I do a deep scleral pocket, which I believe uh, might increase the flow control over the express procedure and also uh, it might be helpful against the scarification of the scleral flap purely because it's a distant area from the flap. You can see perfectly well the gray area which we need to do the paracentesis and here is the express. I normally put two sutures and that's it. Another example of high magnification and digital filter applying over the image is here. Again, this is a case of Express. This is the regular view. This is another filter. And this is the filter that I regularly use in procedures where we have a lot of blood because Nowadays, we often share our surgical content in LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and their bots are trained to discover the red blood. When you apply a filter, the blood becomes orange and you escape the bots. So in now, in nowadays, it might be important. This is a complex case of trauma on which I performed lensectomy then there will be a iris iridoplasty uh, because this is a 10 years old child and the trauma was severe with a rock and i will try to save as much as i can from the iris i emphasize on this step because even through an uh, analog microscope, it's difficult to synchronize your movements, and this is done heads up. So it's absolutely possible with ingenuity. Here, I even will re grasp the needle heads up. So it's a matter of training. This is a 40 millimeter needle with prolen suture. For me, it's important the needle to be stiff in order to be uh, guided uh, with um, enough control through the anterior chamber. Here it is, how I will, I will try to make some sort of a pupil, round pupil. We all know that this is challen challenging. Here I will use a horizontal hook to retrieve the suture. And then I will use a sipser sliding knot to tie the, the suture outside the eye. Sipser sliding knot is my preferred way, to, way of doing it because it gives me more control and it is outside the eye. So the next part is to Gore-Tex suture uh, across AO IOL because I like the Gore-Tex sutures. They don't degrade during the years like uh, the proline and it is a lifetime solution. Remember this is a 10 years of age boy. So with horizontal scleral pockets, which will cover the Gore-Tex suture, uh, it will be fixated. And this is additional suture in order to 
create some shape of the pupil. So the eye, I think, looks really good after the surgery. This is example of Tanito micro hook goniotomy. Uh, the image is through Mori gonio lens. And this will be important because nowadays our focus on the channel is increasing. I mean, there are devices like I stand recently acquired Hydrus, uh, which is recently acquired from uh, Alcon. There was Cypass in the past already. It is not available anymore. But anyways, the angle is uh, a new target or an old target which is newly discovered for the glaucoma specialist. Now, this is another option to show how the picture-in-picture -picture capability of ingenuity might increase even our scientific uh, um, research. This is uh, on the right side of the image, thermocamera, which is attached to the Lumera microscope. And the image simultaneously is uh, shown on the screen of ingenuity. And we can, if we want, of course, we can titrate our power delivery by the color of the tip of the ultrasound. So it might be used for uh, orientation. What is the temperature in the anterior chamber that we normally reach or um, in more dense cataracts? where would be our threshold for uh, power delivery. And in that way, we will save the cornea. Here, it, this is an example of huge macular hole on which I suspect that there is a glial ring on the lips, which I want to peel. You can appreciate the level of magnification and the detail. So you see how stretched the retina is. And of course, it's difficult to engage this ring. Here it is. And I'm afraid to peel more <laughs> because I might induce more damage than good. So here, this is a typical myopic fundus on which I applied uh, ILM enhancement filter. And I sh I'm sure that you would agree that the filtered image provides more contrast because the myopic retina and the lack of pigment epithelium behind the retina is really pale. So that way, I have a better visibility of the blue stained uh, membrane. Again, this cannot be done with analog microscope. This is an example of retinal autograph procedure. Uh, and it is in retinal detachment due to large macular hole. Normally, these are conditions in high myopic eyes. So the only solution for such retinal detachment is to close the macular hole. Otherwise, it's pointless to use a uh, laser or you cannot use laser in the macula, of course, but we need to close the macular hole. Uh, it can be done either with autograft or with uh, amnion membrane or with ILM flap. But here I choose retinal autograft. Uh, again, with the ingenuity, the freedom of movement is far better than if I was inclined to the oculars of the microscope. So here I will readjust the position of the graft and that's it. Here, this is a case of retinal angio uh, macroaneurysm, which in which we use uh, subretinal uh, TPA in order to dissolve and displace the subretinal uh, hemorrhage. 
why this is important? Because we know that there are uh, medications like Luxturna, which are for genetic disease, which are delivered uh, supratinally. So better vis visualization with better control with, will provide us with more options to treat uh, different eye conditions. So normally we use around 0.2 milliliters of TPA combined with anti-VGF. They are mutually beneficial in order to resolve and displace the supretinal hemorrhage. And this is the last video which I will show. This is a PVD induction in case of a large macular hole. You can appreciate the bursa premacularis and you can see now how the vice ring is formed and the posterior hyaline is detached. Really important in any retinal surgery. And again, the digital filtering and peeling under PFCL because the macular hole is really large. And I will apply here the en uh, envelope technique of inverted ILM flap in order to close the macular hole. Nowadays, I use more often temporal flap technique, which works surprisingly well. I Even I was surprised. So in the envelope technique, you need to leave a good amount of ILM into the macular hole and it acts ex like a scaffold actually for closing the macular hole. The trade-off is that the functional result is not so good as uh, a primary closure of the macular hole and it takes time like three to six months but generally, nowadays, the temporal ILM flap technique is my preferred choice. I must say that this is an image through the biome. I don't use contact lens. And this is the fluid air exchange. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.